This is the Veritas Boxmakers Plowplane. And this is a Live Edge Box. And this is not a video about making a Live Edge Box. This... <laughs> Alright, I can't, I can't do that anymore. Anyway, this is actually more of a companion to my Veritas Boxmakers Plowplane review video, so if you haven't seen that one, check it out. I'll throw a card up in the corner. This isn't going to be a full box making tutorial or video, it's just mainly showing off how to use the Boxmakers Plowplane or some, maybe, pardon the pun, all right, I'm not going to apologize for that. Out of the box uses of the Veritas Boxmakers Plowplane. So, let's jump into it. So what I've got set up here is kind of a unique opportunity. I don't know how often this will actually come up, but I am pretty much right at the extent of what I can have for the actual cutting width, which I suppose I should check by the way. So from the fence to the center of the cutter, I believe it's close to about three inches is pretty much where it max out. But what I'm doing here is I'm wanting to cut a groove that's parallel to the bottom, but close to this top edge. But because this top edge is live edge, obviously I can't reference off of that with a straight fence because the line won't quite work. So. <laughs> because this is so close to the edge, I can't use the holdfasts on top because obviously they'd be in the way. And then I can't put the holdfasts on the opposite side because I need to reference off of that. So I just have a scrap piece of wood with two screws on the end and one screw on the back. The screw on the back is kind of angled in to hold it in together so it basically acts as a little bit of a tail vise. And then the two holdfasts are here to not only hold the whole thing onto the bench, but also to act as a stop so that this can't go out any further that way. So that's what I've got. We'll see how this thing does when it's all set up for way the heck in the middle. And I'm also just adding a little bit of wax because that's my habit. So once you get out here, this is actually pretty tippy. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that this is good for uh, beading because this is a lot narrower than on some other options. So that's something to keep in mind is that it might be easy to tip the plane. That actually worked not too bad. Once again, I've got my holdfast set way outside because, again, they get close. And I'm set up with the, I think this is the four, five sixteenths iron. And set up for a rabbit, a little bit of shallow rabbit because I'm going to make some rabbits on the side for fitting into the grooves for a box. Pretty easy, just like everything else, you just kind of go. <laughs> go until you hit your depth stop. There we go. Flip it around and I'll do the other side quick. Got to be careful not to let this thing clog up. The mouth on it is really not that big. So one of the things that you got to do is Make sure that you clear it out if it starts to get jammed up or it'll do that. But that's not really the fault of the plane overall. I mean, there's a pretty good little scoop coming out of there with the little lever cap. So it, it actually does all right. It's just every now and then you gotta watch out for that just like any other plane. Okay, so this isn't supposed to do this, but we're gonna try. So what I have is I took a marking gauge and I've marked a line across the end of the board because I need a rabbit there too. Now, there's no spur on the box maker's paw plane. So what I've done is I used that marking gauge to mark off that line. 
And then I just used a chisel to kind of define that edge, I guess, knife wall, because that's what it is. And then I'm just going to mark this with a knife real quick. And then I'm gonna cut it. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go grab a piece of tape and I'm gonna put it on this side because I wanna make sure that I don't go all the way down to that rabbit because I'd rather clean that up myself than let the plane do it with the depth stop. Basically the important part is that where the depth stop is gonna ride is protected. So I've got the same setting that I had for the rabbits and I'm just going to see if I can manage to do this rabbit on the end across the end grain. And apart from where I chickened out <laughs> and stopped a little bit earlier with my uh, saw. That actually worked quite well. So I will probably come in here with a shoulder plane and clean this up. There we go. So even though it doesn't have a spur over here to cut the end grain as you're going across the grain, it actually does fine as long as you are sufficiently prepared. So I kind of, you know, obviously just cut my own side there. So that way I didn't have to cut it with the plane itself. And then I had these two rabbits for kind of the end zones where I didn't have to worry about it blowing out on the end. And then I put that piece of tape down to get it to stop about one, maybe two shavings shy of being all the way down. And then I cleaned it up with a rabbit plane because I had it you could probably do it being very careful with the box makers ball plane actually and then uh, chisel is another option too but i guess i'm going to try it with this just to see where i was at so i guess there was just a little bit there that i didn't quite get with the shoulder plane so just goes to show you being a little bit careful is oftentimes just as good as having other tools already done with the grooves. I've already done these rabbits on the end that had nothing to do with this, so didn't film it. Now I'm going to do some rabbits for the bottom so that I can use that for the bottom of the box. This was sort of a last minute thing that I tried out. I took a marking gauge and very much in the same fashion as doing a rabbit with a rabbit plane with no fence. I put a pretty heavy marking gauge line and then I put the depth stop all the way up, removed the fence and taking a pretty light cut so that the iron doesn't dig in too much versus the skate. I'm just leaning it over a little bit and then I'm following that knife line from the marking gauge and just kind of plowing a groove at an angle. So I was kind of surprised that this actually worked and the thing I was trying to put in it was actually held in it. So not really a quote unquote normal use of the plane, but hey, <laughs> worked. So that is the box. It is cherry live edge with a walnut top and bottom, just a slide out lid with a little finger pull on it. And I made it for a, another YouTuber and because they sent me a box, I decided to send this one to them. And if you want to learn any more about it, check the description for the full blog. Thanks for watching.